On a sunny day in July 2011, hundreds of amateur sailors are gathering in the historic port of Southampton, UK, for what promises to be a life-defining journey. I'm, I'm ready for it, just to feel a, a bit nervous, but it hasn't really sunk in what's, what I'm actually setting out to do now. just watching everybody get ready and you can see there's a lot of very nervous people around who I think are trying to occupy themselves so um, so yeah it all suddenly seems very real. As they count down the last few hours before the start of the eight clipper round the world yacht race the docks are awash with friends, families and well wishers. Fabulous that all our friends and family are out there to see us off. So in that way, that's an amazing thing that they're there and we get to be really proud, waving to them from the stage and knowing that they're there. It's quite sad as well. You know, leaving them for a year is, uh, yeah, quite painful. <laughs> so uh, it doesn't get any better than that. Huge crowd and uh, we're all just ready to go. Let's go. So after sometimes years of planning and a full rigorous month-long training programme, the moment arrives to say farewell and plunge themselves into their great adventure. To send them off in grand style, helicopter carrier HMS Illustrious escorts them to the start line. Ahead lies officially the longest yacht race in the world. The first couple of legs will take in the enormous challenge of the Atlantic. From race start Port Southampton to Cape Town via stops in Madeira and Rio de Janeiro, next is the formidable challenge of the Southern Ocean to Western Australia. And then the brand new clipper leg via the Southern Ocean again to New Zealand and on to Eastern Australia. The fleet returns to the Northern Hemisphere to sweltering Singapore, followed by freezing Qingdao. Then it's the big one, almost 6,000 miles of vast Pacific Ocean to San Francisco Bay. Next, the cruise journey from West to East Coast America via the awe-inspiring Panama Canal. And finally, it's homeward bound across the Atlantic once more to complete a whopping 40,000 miles circumnavigation. As the clock ticks down, 10 identical racing yachts jostle for position and their crews prepare for one of the biggest days of their lives. Probably about another 10 or 15 seconds. Tell me when we're on the start line, OK? Five, four, three, two, one, go! Go, go, go! Go, go, go! Go, go, go! Go, go, go! Stop. That was the cannon that just went off. They've raised the flag. We're racing. Taking start line honours and overall bragging rights is Gold Coast Australia. Nine other teams are chasing them hard. Edinburgh, inspiring capital. New York, welcome to Yorkshire. Geraldton, Western Australia. Singapore, Delaga London. Qingdao, Derry, Londonderry and visit Finland. I'm more emotional than I thought I would be. You know, you've been preparing for so long, you just want to get started, and then you say goodbye to everyone, you see them on the boats, and who knows when you'll see them again? It's, you know, it's quite strange. As it turns out, the first five and a half thousand mile leg to Rio de Janeiro via the Portuguese island of Madeira proves the perfect adjustment to the myriad demands of ocean racing. There's no respite. It's, uh, you just keep going and going and going. And it's not just adapting to a new way of life. I will accept you all into my domain. The crews also experience bizarre seafaring traditions, such as paying homage to great god of the sea, Neptune, as they cross the equator. Hey! In the end, it's Gold Coast Australia who get off to a flyer by winning both races. 
But they and the rest of the fleet are well aware the next leg back across the Atlantic to Cape Town, South Africa, will raise the challenge up a few notches. Leg two of the race is quite a bit more challenging. The South Atlantic is a different beast to the North Atlantic. Um, it's much more exposed, uh, a lot less land around it, and the, uh, the winds and the waves will be uh, much more challenging in terms of stronger and bigger. While this in itself is a daunting prospect, Janice Taylor on Dutch boat De Lager Landen must also contend with a hearing impediment. I am profoundly deaf without the assistance of my listening device. Um, that posed some additional challenges on leg one. I interact very well one-on-one -on -one or in very small groups, but when the, and the entire watch is, uh, is joking, it can be very difficult. And without those highs, without the laughter, uh, it does make the lows uh, seem a lot lower. While well, Janice's teammates seem up for it on race day... We can do very well this race. I can just feel it in my bones. In practice, things don't go so smoothly. OK, is everyone ready to tack? Come on, guys, stay in your own positions, please. We're in a right old mess at the moment. We're about to cross the start line to race, yeah? Helms to Lee. And Lee Ho. Soon that's put behind them. As racing resumes, the Dutch team get their first taste of huge South Atlantic rollers. Having earlier held self-reservations, whether she's cut out for the ocean waves, Janice surprisingly discovers she's in her element. Until you're out here and you feel the adrenaline rush and get that tingle up your spine when the boat starts to shudder, you can feel it vibrating and then you pick up speed. It's just fantastic. I can't remember having so much fun. It's, a, it's just an incredible experience to surf down the back of these waves. This is what we decided to sail around the world for. But as the fleet start dipping down into the deeper latitudes, the conditions get ever more extreme. On De Lager Landen, this is teaching the crew some harsh life lessons. You're getting into damp clothes, you're getting into a damp bunk. Getting out of damp clothes, back into damp clothes. So, uh, pretty miserable. And land, you can you can retreat to your bed. Uh, you can be be warm and be brought hot tea and um, have those little comforts, and they just don't exist on the boat. The sailing is the easy part. It's the living that's challenging. But as they climb back north towards South Africa, the rough conditions finally relent. And while this is rejoiced. <laughs> Gold Coast Australia are happiest as they pick up a hat-trick of wins. Later on, De Lager Landon is also pretty pleased by claiming the third podium position. And wow, we have just crossed another ocean, and there's South Africa. And we sailed here on this little bit of stuff together as a team. It's fantastic. That means a fifth of the way through the race series, Gold Coast Australia have a commanding lead, while it's all to play for for the rest. But coming up is a challenge sure to put a shiver down the crew's spines. Otherwise we'll twist it at the top. Widely regarded as the scariest body of water on the planet, it's the famed Southern Ocean.